If our churches are so friendly, why is the American church dying? Today we're going to talk about why friendliness isn't enough to do Jesus' work. I'm Pastor Mike. This is scripture that makes a difference. Where we believe knowing scripture makes a difference in our lives and that it will make a difference in yours too. If you're new here, please click the subscribe button and stay to the end to hear my cure for the friendly church. Because if you do, you'll understand why this passage makes a difference. To understand that, first we have to set the stage. In Jesus' day, rabbis were common. According to Ray Vanderlane, most villages would have had a synagogue that hired a teacher, respectfully called a rabbi, to teach their children. All the kids would go to their equivalent of a grade school, but at about age 12 or 13, most would begin to stay at home and learn a trade. Those identified with the aptitude would be invited to attend something more like a secondary school. There, they would do more in-depth studies of the prophets and the writings. The best of these would seek permission to follow a more famous rabbi as he traveled around the country. The point, only the best and the brightest were disciples of those famous traveling rabbis. It's not that different from what we see today. Certain people are expected to get a job right out of high school. Others attend trade schools. In our culture, most are encouraged to attend at least some college. A few are able to move to graduate school, and the elite are able to get their doctorates. But what if the local university began recruiting students for their doctorate programs at the local trade schools? That would raise a few eyebrows. How can a trade school student absorb the complex concepts taught in the doctoral programs? How would they gain the skills to do the research or write the papers needed to complete the programs? It just wouldn't make sense. But that's essentially what Jesus did in our story today. He asked a local tradesman and a worker in tax collecting, no less, to be his disciple. And Jesus uses this opportunity to teach that his kingdom will be filled with a new kind of citizen, a citizen who thinks and acts differently from the traditional citizen. As we pick up the text in Matthew 9, 9, Jesus is just healed a man let down through his roof. Uh, the story demonstrates his authority to forgive sins, but now he's moving around the city to another place of ministry. And then he sees a tax collector named Matthew. Yep, the author of this book. And Jesus gives the simple invitation to follow me. And Matthew surprisingly did, right then and there. Now, this represented a new source of disciples. Most disciples were called from the synagogues, but Matthew came from the tax booth. Most were called from the intellectual, but Matthew came from the trades. Most were called from the respectable, but Matthew wasn't. Tax collectors who collect taxes for Rome were considered traitors to their people. The tax booth was not a socially acceptable resource for rabbis, disciples. But not only were Jesus' disciples drawn from a different source, they were chosen for a different character. During Matthew's celebration of his new role, he had invited his old friends to a banquet. And who were his old friends? People just like him, tax collectors and sinners. When Jesus' old friends, the Pharisees, heard about this, they began spreading discontent among Jesus' other disciples, saying, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? At this, Jesus interrupted and responded, Those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick. And in verse 13, he says, For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. This was exactly the opposite of the traditional call. Most rabbis wanted students of proven character, but Jesus calls people with poor reputations. 
not because they have poor reputations, but to improve, to heal their reputation by his influence over them. He wanted raw material he could work with, not an already finished product. In these encounters, Jesus is demonstrating that he is calling a new kind of follower. And that's something to consider in our changing world today. It's hard to include a new kind of follower in our 21st century churches. Many churches don't represent their communities anymore. Communities that were once mostly white, Anglo-Saxon, middle class, have changed into African-American working class, or Asian-American extended families, or Hispanic lower class neighborhoods. Yet the church building, only used an hour a week, still attracts white, middle-class suburbanites. It doesn't seem to ever occur to those congregations to adjust their ministry to meet the needs of their community. It happens in business, too. A small business person sees the clientele changing, has more difficulty meeting their needs, but it never occurs to them to hire people who understand the client's culture. Or what about manufacturing? What if Coca-Cola had refused to adjust to the public opinions when new Coke turned out to be bad Coke? And don't forget what happened to Motorola's share of the cell phone market when they refused to switch to digital in the mid-90s. Failure to recognize situational changes can be costly. So, as followers of Jesus, we need to recognize his authority to change tactics in response to changing situations. He came to inaugurate a new kingdom, and in doing so, has called a new type of citizen. So how do we respond? For many, the church does not have a reputation for friendliness toward those not like us. At the same time, most churches rate themselves as friendly places. This is my suggestion for a simple but profound change in response to the new faces Jesus is calling today. What would happen if our churches stopped being friendly places and started making friends? What if we committed to spend time with people who visit our churches but aren't like us? What if we invited someone from a different background out to lunch? What if we did more than just the minimum of shaking hands and asking about their families and jobs and where they grew up? It's a lot more messy. It takes more effort. It's a lot more uncomfortable. And it changes us more than we would like to accept. But... Since Jesus is calling these different people into his kingdom, we must be called to be kingdom citizens with them. So, including the people Jesus is calling means including a new kind of follower. It means our churches will have a lot more color in them. It means some of the leaders will look different, sound different, and many come from parts of the world we consider very different. But if Jesus has called them, they are citizens of this kingdom, his disciples. And they're here for a reason, to glorify him and serve him together with us. And that is a difference that will change the world, change the church, and potentially change society. And that's how this is scripture that makes a difference. And if you agree, I hope you'll subscribe to this channel. I hope you'll come back for more of this kind of content. I hope you'll click the little bell so that you'll get notified every time I release a new video. I do so two or three times a week. And I hope you'll make comments. And any kind of comment is welcome. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with the things I've been saying. You might let me know if you have questions. I promise to answer all those as soon as I can. And you might also let me hear your suggestions, both for topics that you might want me to cover in the future, and also for techniques that might make this video more useful to your friends who need to know that Scripture makes a difference. <laughs>